While dishwashers can differ from model to model, they all operate on similar principles. In this video, we will address the five basic stages of dishwasher operation, as well as potential problems you may encounter. In most cases, the fill cycle actually begins with draining the water from the appliance, although some of this water is retained in the sump housing to prevent the seals from drying out and cracking when the dishwasher is not in use. Most dishwashers have a timed fill cycle that will allow no more than two gallons of water to enter during operation. The home's water supply line connects to the water inlet valve on the dishwasher. When you select a wash cycle, the control sends 120 volts of alternating current to the inlet valve solenoid, opening the valve and allowing the proper amount of water into the tub. Depending on the model, the voltage sent by the control will keep the valve open between 90 and 120 seconds. If the control fails and doesn't shut off the voltage to the valve, a float will actuate a switch that shuts off the water. Keep in mind that the purpose of the float is to prevent overfilling. The float itself does not monitor or control the amount of water entering the tub. Having the proper amount of water is vital to the dishwasher's performance. If the tub is underfilled, the dishware will not clean properly. Commonly, underfilling is caused by a restricted water inlet valve. To help determine this, pour 1 to 2 quarts of water into the bottom of the tub and run the dishwasher. If the wash performance improves, the valve is probably restricted and should be replaced. Trying to clean out an old valve is not recommended due to the risk of part failure after repair. Once the proper amount of water enters the tub, the washing stage begins. The three factors that affect the wash cycle are water circulation, detergent, and water temperature. To circulate water within the dishwasher, the control sends voltage to a circulation motor. The motor drives a pump, which uses an impeller to force the water up through the wash arms. The arms are driven by the water jetting out of the holes. If the arms are not rotating or you experience poor wash performance, the cause could be a worn or damaged impeller. As the food debris is cleaned from the dishware, it collects in the sump, which filters and retains the larger particles. This filter prevents the food particles from being circulated through the wash arms. Over time, some particles may still reach the wash arms clog the holes, and reduce wash performance, so you may need to clean out the holes periodically. Also, be aware that it's normal for the arms to feel a little loose when not in operation. As the water circulates through the arms, a wax motor or solenoid causes the dispenser to open, releasing detergent that mixes with the water. Since dishwasher detergent does not create suds like other detergents or soaps, you should only use detergent designated for dishwasher use. You should also be aware that too much detergent may result in pitting or etching on glassware, so follow manufacturer's recommendations. Depending on the setting, the dishwasher may use a heating element during the wash cycle. The control will send voltage to the element periodically to maintain a water temperature between 120 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. If a problem develops, a high-limit thermostat will switch off the voltage to prevent damage to the dishwasher. If you suspect the heating element is not working, you can test the element for continuity to determine if a continuous electrical path is present. After the completion of each wash cycle, the dishwasher will drain the dirty water from the tub. The control sends voltage to a drain pump that uses an impeller to force water through the drain hose to a disposal or drain pipe. To ensure proper draining and prevent the water from flowing back into the tub, you must make sure the drain hose has a loop that goes above the drain. If the water does not drain, first check the drain hose for any obstructions. If the hose is clear, the drain pump may be defective and require replacement. The dishwasher will go through several rinse cycles, which are similar to the wash cycles, and may also use the heating element. The final rinse cycle introduces rinse aid from the dispenser instead of detergent. Rinse aid helps to dry the dishware 
and prevents streaking caused by hard water. The harder the water, the more rinse aid will be required. You should consult the owner's manual to determine the optimum rinse aid setting for your use. Following the rinse cycles will be a final drain cycle. As we mentioned earlier, some water will remain in the tub to preserve the seals and prevent cracking. Once the dishware has been washed and rinsed and the water has been drained from the unit, the drying process will begin. Two things are required to dry the dishware efficiently, heat and venting. Some models will use a heating element to heat the air inside the tub. Other models will rely on the heat generated by the final rinse cycle. The hot, moist air will either exit through a permanent vent or through a vent in the door which is opened by a wax motor or solenoid. Without proper venting, the moisture or water vapor would condense back into liquid and collect on the dishware. Repair Clinic has a solution for many of the problems you may be experiencing with your dishwasher. Enter the appliance's full model number in our website search engine for a complete list of compatible parts. Our site also has an extensive selection of instructional videos to assist you, covering topics like part testing, disassembly, and part replacement. At Repair Clinic, we make fixing things easy.